This is your step-by-step -step guide for adding a laser to your 3D printer for under $60. So you've saved up your pennies for a 3D printer and you're really enjoying it, but you also want to be able to engrave with a laser. Well, you're probably not the only one because this has been a highly requested video for me. So finally, I've caved in. I have got this laser kit from Banggood at my request and I've used it to make this guide for this video. After we get over the hurdle of the initial wiring, this is very plug and play, very fast to set up and the software is free and doesn't even need installation. Let's have a closer look. Here's our laser add-on module. As you can see, it's a little bit over $50 and that's without any flash sales. When we unbox it, everything's there, but there's one variation. When we head back to the store page, we can see that this box is missing. It must just be a stock photo because it works perfectly fine without it. Obligatory safety warning, the glasses are there for a reason. Please wear them at all times. Now this laser works from PWM or pulse width modulation. Let's have a look at how that works. On a 24 volt system like the Ender 3 or Ender 5, let's imagine that we turned on full 24 volts and then a split second later turned it off again. We turned it on, then off, then on, then off. And with this repetition, we notice that the time on matches the time off and this is 50% duty cycle for PWM. 3D printers use this for part cooling fans, 10% duty cycle equating to 10% power, 50% is 50% and so forth. Back on our Arduino page, we'll see that if it's on for longer than it's off, it'll have a higher percentage duty cycle, all the way up to 100%. There is G-code built into Marlin to control the fan and this duty cycle, and it's M106S and then a number between 0 and 255. If we call M106S0, it's going to turn the fan off. M106S125 is roughly 50%, and M106255 would set the fan to 100%. This laser module is designed to plug in instead of the fan and therefore the G-code M106 will control the intensity of the laser in exactly the same way. We can see in this clip that the laser remains on the whole time but in the parts where it's not drawing it just has a really low duty cycle and then it's turned back on and off as it's necessary to mark the patterns on the timber. So that's the theory covered on how this thing is going to work. So what's actually involved in wiring it up? This kit is designed for a CR10, which is 12 volts, and in that case, you simply unplug your part cooling fan and plug this in in its place. Now, the plug on an Ender 3 or 5 is exactly the same, but the board is 24 volts and therefore not compatible. If you've converted to an MKS Gen L, it's still a 24 volt system, so although the plug is there and it will go straight in, it's also not compatible. Our answer is to spend a couple more dollars on a buck converter which when wired the right way will let us step down the 24 volt signal to 12 volts for the laser. You might think it's just a matter of going 24 volts in and 12 volts out, but in this configuration, it doesn't work. And that's because of these smoothing capacitors. I found that when I ran an M106S1, it was still hitting somewhere around 11 to 12 volts. Therefore, this method is ineffective. Here's what we need to do. And it looks more complicated, but it's really not too bad at all. We're gonna work through this diagram bit by bit so it all makes sense for you. When you've got the cover off your printer, be aware that there is mains wiring going into your power supply and yes, this can kill you. Unplug the power from the wall and don't touch these wires anyway. Our first connection is 24 volts with a positive and negative from the power supply into the inputs of the buck converter. On the output side of the buck converter, we're only going to attach the red positive wire we're going to take our negative from the part cooling fan wiring instead. You can see here that I've fed this part of the loom through the case and now I have it externally available. Our output plug attaches directly to the laser add-on module. The Ender 5 is super convenient because outside of the case, it has a connector for the part cooling fan with blue and gold wires. For this printer, we simply unplug the part cooling fan and instead plug in our negative wire that's now going to the laser module. For other printers that don't have the convenience of a plug for the part cooling fan, we can make up a small extension loom. If you have some old main boards or other electronics, with a set of pliers you'll probably find the female plug that you need. If you've got a busted old PC fan, you'll probably find you have the male plug that you need. 
cut it to length, strip the wires and put some heat shrink over the top to cover our new connection later on. Now we're ready to do a tiny bit of soldering. Heat and then add solder to tin the wiring of your new loom. It's going to be attached to a two pin header, so tin both of those as well. Now we simply solder the end of our loom onto the header and once we've done that, we slide down our heat shrink, apply some heat and everything will be sealed up. Now we use some pliers to pull off the little plastic spaces for our header pins, temporarily put our two plugs together to orient them and now feed in from behind the two pins to complete our loom. We should have male on one end and female on the other and you can test fit it by connecting it to itself. My Ender 3 with its MKS Gen L conversion has a very hard to reach plug for the cooling fan. With an extension cable, I can unplug the original, plug in my extension in its place and then feed it out the back where I can access it easily to change between the laser and the part cooling fan. This fan gets a blip of full power when the printer is turned on. So for safety reasons, I would strongly recommend unplugging the laser before you power up the printer. For this initial calibration, you need to be connected to software that gives you control over the part cooling fan. And you're gonna start by turning it the whole way up. You can now use a multimeter on the buck converter and turn the adjustment screw until you get it to around 12 and a half volts. As you can see, this gives a usable range from around eight or nine volts all the way up to the full 12 and a half volts when the fan is turned on the whole way. That had far more steps than I intended when I picked this one off the website, but all of the hard work is now done and the next step is to do a little bit of calibration and setup on our printer. When we make our laser G code, there'll be no homing. So we need to start by auto homing the printer manually. After that, we're gonna raise the Z to a fixed height. I like 50 millimeters. Any movements you make after homing should be through manual control. Don't disable the steppers and move it by hand as you'll lose your position. Installing the actual laser couldn't be easier. As long as you have a metal frame, you simply take the magnets, push them against it, and it should be held in place. You need to get a ruler and measure the offset between the middle of the laser and the middle of the nozzle. I measured 55. Our last step is to focus the laser. So once again, we're gonna turn the part cooling fan, which is now the laser, the whole way up. You're aiming to twist the focus style to get the smallest spot possible and it helps to move the piece of wood around, otherwise it just sits in the same place and everything tends to blend together. This focus will stay calibrated unless you use a vastly different thickness material or change your starting height. Another reminder for using these glasses, it really is essential. And also a reminder for the smoke. It's not as strong as if you were cutting the whole way through with a laser cutter, but it will build up in the room. Just make sure you're well ventilated. The final step is setting up software and we've got a gem made free from the community, runs off a website, doesn't even need installation by Nabanix. The software we're going to use, I originally found on Thingiverse and the good news is it's absolutely free. It's well documented with a GitHub page as well as a wiki with a full explanation of all of the commands. Links for all of this are in the description. This is the actual site that we use. We don't need to download and install anything. There's a lot of settings on this page, so let's go through the important ones, but generally what I have here should be okay for you to copy as a starting point. Minimum laser power should not be zero. This is for the sections you intend to be white on your image. If you put it to zero, it completely cuts the power. And then I found when it fires back up to do a darker area, there's a little delay in the startup. So I found a value of 10 was low enough that it wouldn't mark the timber, but still kept the power to the module. Max power, I went for 255, although you can experiment having it slightly lower. Laser power off should be zero. Skip values over is to do with the JPEG and it ignoring potential artifacts. The non-cutting rate can be really fast because that's it's just traveling around without burning anything. And the main thing you should experiment with is this cutting rate. The slower you put it, the darker the lines will be and the lighter you put it, the lighter the lines will be. Too slow and it's just gonna be a black mess too fast and nothing's really gonna be left behind. After a lot of trial and error, I found 310 is a pretty good baseline. Overscan distance is meant to get rid of some twang in the belt, but I found I didn't really need it. The height is the actual height of the image when it's finished. You have to put in the height and then it will auto calculate the width. Now horizontal resolution and scan gap is to do with the resolution of the image. If you have it too close, it's just gonna burn the surrounding areas. If you have it too far apart, it's gonna look blotchy. I found 0.15 for each of these was spot on. Now start X and start Y is the offset of the laser head from the nozzle of the printer. 
Now I lined up for X mine in line with the nozzle, but I measured 55mm in front and that's where I enter this. Image file is where you click and browse your computer to load a file. You can see here I have a 3D Benchy and the first thing I'd recommend doing is putting it on grayscale preview and then clicking save. We can see that it's converted the image into grayscale so now I can go back if I'm happy with that, change it to G code and hit save and now the file will download ready to send to the machine. If you open the downloaded G code in your favorite slicer program, you might be able to get a preview, especially if you tick show travel moves. It might look like it's misaligned, but remember the laser sits 55 millimeters forward of where the nozzle is, so it will actually be in the corner where you would expect. Also note that the image has been mirrored. This is especially important if you're engraving onto something special. We've done all the hard work. We've got our file processed and ready for engraving. So let's get started. If you run the job tethered to a computer over USB, you should see your part cooling fan dial go up and down, indicating the PWM being sent to the laser. If you run the G code off the SD card, you'll see that the graphic on the LCD will also go up and down to reflect this. In any case, it's going to go horizontally from side to side, and as we saw at the beginning, the laser remains on even in the portions that aren't burnt because the laser is being run in those parts with a lower PWM duty cycle. Through the camera, we can safely see that the intensity of the laser is modulated to etch the desired pattern. To make this guide, I've had a fair bit of trial and error and I've put quite a few hours on this laser so far. So let me run you through my results. My first one was this big one here. I can't even remember what it was meant to be because it clearly didn't work. It was just a big splotch. After that, I started doing my little teaching tech logos and I was trying to cut corners with the settings and it just wasn't working out. I believe I had the resolution too fine and I was turning off the laser in between passes, hence the delay on the left hand side and a gap in the artwork. Finally, I put in the time to get the settings right and that was the first time that my image on the timber matched what I had on the computer. From this point onwards, it was just a matter of tuning that speed to control how long the laser was in one spot and how dark it would be. The first one I did with that was a picture of Chuck Norris. I just can't resist. But I think you'll agree that one's a little bit dark. So I sped it up a little bit and then I did this car from Initial D. I still thought that was a little bit too dark. So I sped it up a little bit more and then I got this one here and I thought that was pretty close to ideal. Still experimenting, I tried this 2D Benchy and I think this one's probably a little bit faint. So I slowed it down to the 310 as I presented in this guide and I got this one here. And that one, in my opinion, has worked out the best out of all of them. Once you've got your base settings correct, it's simply a matter of tweaking that speed to control the darkness or lightness depending on the image that you have. Now, I should mention that this does take a long time to cut. Something like the Chuck Norris took about four hours and this Benchy takes about three. So just keep in mind your printer will be out of action for actual 3D printing during that time and that you need to be patient. Is this the type of mod that you're interested in? Have you tried it before? I'd love to hear your experiences by reading them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy laser engraving on a 3D printer. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.